Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of X-Plane 12 and today we are back with some hangar control but today we're just going to be doing some flying around and comparing the Cessna 172 flight experience and the default Cessna 172 to that of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm getting ready to start my pilot's license training finally after a long haul and wait. I'm finally in a position where I think it is time to get started. So I'm starting to really pay more attention to how the different aircraft fly and I figured I would share some of my results with you and maybe some of the reasons why X-Plane 12 and the X-Plane series is still quote-unquote publicly speaking considered a better training platform. But is that really the case anymore? Today we're going to talk about it. If you are interested in any of my tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Okay, folks, so as we get started, I do want to remind everybody that Hangar Control is out and ready to roll. If you guys are interested in a five-day free unrestricted trial of the software, please consider going to overkillsimulations.com, create an account first, then click the account button at the top of the website, and then download the latest version of the software and start your Hangar Control journey. Remember that hangar control is not specific to flight simulation, although at the moment that is the primary focus, and it can is compatible with both Microsoft Flight Simulator as well as the X-Plane series of flight sims. It can also handle DCS World as far as all of your button binds and switches, given that DCS World relies primarily on um, keyboard commands at the moment, but we're going to be changing that later too. It could also handle all of your applications, launching all of your apps from a single click of a button based on a profile you create, including websites while also remembering their window positions and while being able to bind a button to toggle certain windows to the front view and then send them back when you're done. It also handles all of your mods, tools, add-ons, backups, your profiles, your config files, and allows you to very easily swap between different configurations. This is extremely helpful if you have different setups for, say, virtual reality versus triple monitors versus single monitors, or things like American Truck Simulator, where you're constantly swapping profiles, mods, and etc. So it can do so much more than even that so make sure that you guys consider checking it out again overkillsimulations.com the software is being updated left and right and each update brings significant performance and feature changes so let's go ahead and get started with today's video though so we're going to for this particular sake we're going to make sure our service is running for x-plane and we're going to um get hangar control sort of out of the way here. I'm just gonna sort of bring it up here just so I can monitor what it's doing. But for the most part, this is about the max of what we're gonna need from hangar control today. Okay, so let's get started and let's start talking. So what is the game, right? Microsoft Flight Simulators Cessna 172 versus X-Plane. Over the last few weeks, I've had more X-Plane experience than I have had in a very long time, given that I have been obviously developing the software to handle it. I haven't bound all of my buttons and switches, which is why you guys are seeing me do both. But anyway, um, but one thing that I have noticed in my uh, trials and errors in the wonderful tr road that we've been on here, hang on, clear prop. is that I think the flight modeling is still better in, um, oh, I didn't know that toggled the brakes. Huh, I didn't know you could do that. I'll be damned. Is I think the flight model is still better in um, X-Plane. And here's why. Before anyone like loses their mind, tells me I'm full of crap, bear with me here a second. The flight model just feels smoother, almost, and, and I don't know, okay? Like, I'm not a pilot yet, but, I, you know, my dad used to have his license, and so we used to fly, you know, we used to go and get breakfast and things like that, you know, when I was younger. So it was a really big deal for us, and um, so I've been in a lot of Cessna 172s, 182s, Katanas, things like that, even the uh, dreaded 150, right? Um, but... Um, I'm not a pilot, so keep that in mind. You know, it's, it's obviously been a long time. But I do find that all in all, just even here taxing on the ground, 
I find that the, the simulation experience in X-Plane feels more natural. Maybe a little too smooth in certain areas, maybe a little too much in some areas, but maybe not. Where, X, where Microsoft Flight Simulator is obviously far superior in um, uh, graphical performance. Like, there, <laughs> I don't care what anyone says, and, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot you can do with X-Plane, but in order to get X-Plane to look decent, okay, like right now, this still very much screams 1990 to me, right? And it's not quite that old, but you guys got the gist. Um... But uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is just gorgeous. And that's actually going to come into some of the play here on our decisions here. But the actual movement of the aircraft, the feel of the plane, the feel of the power controls, um, and the way that they behave. You know, as we start to rotate here, or as we start to increase power, and we're taking off with a nice tailwind like a dork. Um, but, you know... I'm slowly having to bring that right rudder in, but not near as dramatic as what I find that I have to do in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's rotation. There we go. Coming off that rudder pedal. And just watch the aircraft and the way it behaves. It's not that Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't do something similar. It's... How do I put this? The way that I'm feeling about X-Plane's flight model is it feels more like a living machine, like it's breathing, like, like and I'm talking about the entire experience, right? Everything, the the turbulence, the, just the wind effect, the, the ground effect, the aircraft, the... Attention weight. all aircraft, Tucson International, information, pop-up, current, altimeter 2, dire, dire, 2. It is absolutely not 2992, it's actually 3008 in real world right now, but that's okay, I don't think I have live weather on. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but... Um, it feels more natural. It feels like a more realistic experience than what I find in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But here's the kicker, right? So one of the things that we're going to be doing, you know, getting into my flight training is I'm going to have to obviously be paying attention to things like, um, you know, your your visual options or, or your visual targets, right? When you, when you start thinking about VFR and things like that, you know, Tucson has... Uh, quite a few very specific landmarks. There's one called Black Mountain. There's another tower. Uh, used to be an old water tower called the Jolly Green. Um, I actually don't know if the Jolly Green is still out there, to be completely honest. Um, you have the Mission, San Javier Mission, that's been out here for a long time, that can often be used as one as well. Um, and just a couple of different things like that that come into play as well. Where Microsoft Flight Simulator out of the box already has a lot of those landmarks already there, ready, and present for us. And so that's a big kicker, right? That's our next big piece. Let's trim that nose up just a bit. But even down to trimming the aircraft, I find trimming the aircraft in X-Plane to be easier and a bit smoother and feel a bit more natural. So I'm completely hands off the controls here and just sort of watch how the plane behaves. Still moving, you're still getting that impact. Okay, you're still watching the things change, but, and again, these are subtle, you guys, they're so subtle, the differences, but after extended use, you start going, hmm, maybe that's not as subtle and useless as I thought it was, maybe that's not quite as weak as I thought it was, and that's the thing that I'm starting to notice the most of here, um, and I'm just kind of curious what you guys think, you know, and, and when was the last time you guys tried X-Plane 12, you know, and that's the kicker, and I'm going to warn you right now, I'm going to warn you right now, if there's even a moment right now where you're thinking about, well, hey, maybe I'll give X-Plane 12 a try. I'm telling you right now, the graphics are going to sting. You're going to get in there and you're going to be like, well, let me try it. And the graphics are just going to drive you crazy. You're going to look at the graphics and you go, I just, I miss that scenery. I miss the colors. I miss the vibrancy. I miss the, the, the glossy shines on the gauges. I miss the, all the reflections and everything that comes with it, right? You know, but I've even gone as far as um, I picked up just this morning, funny enough, the, um, what is it, Airfoil Labs, it, 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 right? I hope I'm saying it right. I just got it today. The Airfoil Labs Cessna 172, which is supposed to be one of the most realistic representations of the 172 that's available, at least for X-Plane. You know, so, um, and it really shocks me when you think about it from a Microsoft Flight Simulator standpoint, coming back for just a minute, that they haven't really dove into a very realistic like and i mean nobody you know at least none that i am currently aware of 
Um, there isn't a very high, true, study-level Cessna 172, which is shocker, because it's such a, uh, a common aircraft for training, right? But, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited to try out the, uh, the airfoil labs. I've done as much as sat in the cockpit, and even then, man, even with the payware software, and that thing is a $50 plane, um, it's, uh, <laughs> the graphics are, are definitely leaving something to be desired, right? Um, let's see, where are we? Okay. I do like that I can actually bind the camera controls in X-Plane. That's another big perk. As silly as that sounds, it's a big perk. Um, definitely plays a big role in some of this here. Let's see here. Okay, sorry about that. I had to step away for just a minute. Anyway, so uh, I'm just kind of curious what you guys are thinking. You know, what do you guys feel? And, and you got to be genuine. You got to be fair here. Okay, don't just say, nope, X-Plane is garbage, it's trash. Is it, though? It still serves a purpose. And I know that there are many, um, um, you know, training schools that still rely very heavily on X-Plane and have not, and I've talked to a few who will not, at this time, make the switch over to Microsoft Flight Simulator. There has to be a reason for that. Like, th there's got to be some validity to this, and, and there's got to be something that we're, we're missing. Like, even here... Look at the way the aircraft's moving. I'm not touching anything, you guys. I'm almost hands off. I've got my fingertips on the flight stick that I'm using right now, just to sort of maintain position. But the the, the overall behavior of the plane that you're seeing bouncing, that's not me. Let's, see, let's actually trim it down a bit. All right, so we're gonna drop flaps here for flaps one, and I'm gonna start really getting ready to trim. She's gonna wanna fall on her face, or climb to her sky, excuse me. So we're going to keep trimming that nose down a bit. See where we are here. I'm a little high in the seat. There we go. That's probably more accurate. Oh, no. Missed that by a lot. Ugh. We're going to bank it pretty hard here. Make a completely unrealistic approach. <laughs> Very unrealistic approach. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop that last set of flaps now. Now we're in rescue mode here. See if I can even salvage this. I don't think so. Keep turning. Keep turning. We ain't there yet, baby. All right. Uh, now we got to get the wind out of this thing. Coming at it with a freaking tailwind. Trying to slip it in here. Come on. Let's let it slip. We're just going to slip it in. Aiming for our marks here. See, like, even this, though, it feels different. Like, I feel like I understand what's happening, even with a freaking tailwind. That last set of flaps. We're gonna land long, but we'll be okay. Nice thing about Tucson International is it has 11,000 feet of runway, so it's pretty hard to go wrong, especially in a 172. Oof! Like dropping a piano. Any musical artist dream. <laughs> anyway, so I'm I've really been enjoying the flight experience in X Plane. And almost more so than I do in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's really been sort of a, a toss-up. Like, obviously, and, and I'm a graphics snob. So when it comes to the graphics, I've obviously been, well, let's just say, more than disappointed, right? But, whoa, baby, slow down. Watch those brake pedals, Mike. There we go. But, um, yeah, I'm just... 
I don't know. The airplane feels better in X-Plane. It feels, like I said, I think the best way to describe it is it feels more like life, like it's breathing, like a living, breathing environment is the feeling I get more so in X-Plane than I do in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but we're going to be doing far more testing. But I just wanted to share that with you guys, do a quick sort of, you know, tour in, in you know, using hair control, show you guys, you know, it in action in Microsoft, or, uh, gosh, I just can't shake that, in X-Plane 12, but I really wanted to talk to you guys about that and see what you guys' opinion is, because it's definitely a noticeable difference and it, I, I, it takes more than one or two flights. Like I said, I've had to do multiple, multiple flights in uh, X-Plane lately due to the development of hangar control. So I've really been put in a position where, you know, I've, I've had to get that, truly get that experience of the simulator. And there's a lot that's wrong with it. And, but it's almost all graphical. I mean, the, the, I mean, I'm going to be honest, even the UI when binding your controls, if you choose not to use something like hangar control, I still prefer X-Plane over Microsoft. Um, the UI in Microsoft is just annoying as all hell. But um, the graphics are really hard to let go of. They really are. You know, Microsoft Flight Simulator is a superbly um, image drawing, you know, platform. And that's definitely what X-Plane needs more than anything is a very massive graphical engine update. And I, I will say that I was sort of disappointed and surprised all at the same time that that didn't come with X-Plane 12 was a, a, a much more advanced, much more accurate and up-to-date um, engine model, right? But, you know, at the same token, it, I guess it all depends on what the, what the focus is. Yeah, just let me know. Unless you're actually one of those things that stop. I mean, at least it doesn't just drive through you like they do with Microsoft. But um, we're just going to park it anywhere. It's my airport. I can do whatever I want with it. You know, they, they don't know. Yo, baby. So, anyways, guys. Curious what you guys' thoughts are. For me, it's becoming more and more of a debate as far as... Oh, wait. There we go. As far as which is better. Um... I don't know. I really don't. Um, I think it's it's a big toss-up. I forgot to bring the flaps up. Um, but um, there's definitely still a place for X-Plane based on the way it flies and the way the aircrafts handle. And um, I kind of want to go to other places around the world, you know, and kind of check things out and see what the performance difference is like. Like, I kind of want to take, you know, a plane out to, like, St. Bart's right and give that a shot and see what that's going to be like and i think as things start to smooth out here for hangar control for a little bit um you know we'll see what happens there anyways hope you guys enjoyed listening to me ramble, ramble and rant um i'm really curious as to what you guys think is the best route to go um real world pilots what would you say especially if you fly both of them i'm kind of curious you know what your guys's buy-in is on that and as always, folks, again, if you're interested in hangar control, go to overkillsimulations.com, create your account first, then click the account button at the top of the website, download the latest version of the software, and start a five-day free unrestricted trial of the software for yourself. Stay safe and healthy, guys, and I will see you in the next one.